guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So let us continue with the backtracking. And in this video, we will solve another problem, uh, which was, I mean, this problem will, will be uh, similar to the previous problems, but let us anyway see it and try to, I'll try to explain a detailed solution and you maybe can code it by yourself. I'll show the code also. So let us read the problem. Print all possible paths from top left to bottom right of M cross N matrix. So problem is simple only, understandable. So from top left cell, we need to reach bottom right cell of a matrix of size M cross N, M rows N columns. And how can we move? We can only move right or down. So this kind of problem actually in dynamic programming, uh, there was a problem wherein we could move right down, but in that we had to find out how many different ways are there to reach the last point. Here we need to print all the ways. So for example, see, consider this, I'll write here. Uh, consider this matrix, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is top left. And this is bottom right. So from top left to bottom right, we have to only move right or down at any point. So how can I go now? For example, one way can be from top left, the, this cell, I'll go down. So one, four, then right, then right. So this is one way. Another way can be from top left, take right, then take down, then go. Uh, then take right again to reach bottom right. Another way can be from one, go to two, from two, go to three, three, you go down to six. So these are the three ways. So like this, all these ways we have to print. So basically each path can be uh, understood as a vector, all those integers, or you can even take it as a string, whatever. Finally, you have to return a vector of uh, strings or vector of vectors, whatever. You, you, uh, you need to return or you need to print them. So how do we solve this kind of a problem? So we have to start from top left and go to bottom right. We can only go right or we can go down. So two options are there, right? So this is again a DFS depth for such problem wherein at each cell, at each location, we will do the two moves. We will either go right or down. And again, when we reach a new cell, we will have two options. So again, over here in this problem, like the previous problems, we have to check for cell validity. What does it mean cell validity? Is the current point at which I am inside the matrix or not? So this is, for example, a two cross three matrix and uh, I can't be here, right? If uh, at any time I go here or for example, just imagine that I am here at four, okay? Then I go down. So when I end up going down, when I end up going down, I should check for cell validity and I'll find that no, it is not valid. So I can't go down. So that is also there, right? And suppose from three, I go right, I will go outside the matrix. So that basic thing also should be taken care over here. And basically, how are we using backtracking to solve this problem? So let me just, do, I'll do a dry run now. So we are going to start from this cell, correct? One, I will say that, okay, I'll go right first. So from, I'll, uh, what I'll do is, I will take a vector, and let it be called as path. Basically, it will tell me all the integers in the path. So I will do path dot pushback. I'll do path dot pushback. What I'll push back? Say uh, the cell has a coordinate x comma y. In this case, x comma y is zero comma zero. We are at the we are at that cell, right? Zero comma zero cell. So we'll have a matrix. So this is a matrix, let this matrix be called mat. So we'll push back this cell here. 
And one more important thing in this DFS kind of problems is we need to keep a visited array, visited matrix or visited array, whatever you can say. Why do we need visited matrix? Because we don't want to end up in the same place. We don't want to make it a cycle. Wherever we started, we don't want to end up there. And if we have already traversed uh, that point, we don't want to continue again and again. So that's why you need a visited matrix. So what we will do after pushing the cell, uh, the uh, value of the cell in the vector path, we'll also say that in the visited matrix, visited, we have visited this cell. So we will check this. We'll say true. Initially, all the values over here will be false, correct? But we'll say visited is true. Then what we'll do, now see, we will go right. So we'll call the function again. We'll do the function call again. This time we are going right. So when we are going right, our X coordinate remains the same. Uh, no, X coordinate becomes plus one and Y, no, sorry. Our X is rows. I'm sorry for that. Here X is rows, Y is column. So if I do X plus one, it means down, but I want to go right. So I'll do Y plus one. So, I will now call this function. Similarly, I will do another function call because from every point I have two options, either go right or I go down. So to go down, it means go one row down. So X plus one Y. So remember here X is rows and Y is for columns. So at every uh, function call, we are at the X, uh, X row and we are at the Yth column, X -th row and Yth column. And after these two functions are finished, we have to do the backtracking part. That is, we need to remove the added element, whatever element we added, right? We have to remove that. So this is the simple backtracking step. And also in the visited array, we have to unmark it for uh, other, uh, this thing paths. If we don't unmark it, then we can't find other paths. So this was basic, uh, this thing, you know, approach. Now I'll show a dry run. So what happens is I'll keep my vector path here and my visited here. Fine. I'm at one. So my vector becomes one like this and visited of one becomes true. I have visited one. Now I go right. Now I check is two visited and is this cell valid? Yes, everything is correct. So I'll make it one, two, and I'll say two is visited. Then I'll go right again. Three is also, I mean, sorry, this cell is also valid. Why is it valid? It is inside the matrix as well as, as, well as it is not visited. All the uh, cells will be unvisited initially. Initially, none of the cells are visited, right? So now I visited three, so I will make it true. Then I'll go right. If I go right, I'll see that it is not a valid cell. Okay. So I won't do anything. Now from this cell, I could go right as well as down. So let me go down now. If I go down, I will get one, two, three, six. Correct. And I'll say six is also true. Now I have reached the last cell. So bottom right, I have reached. So whenever you reach bottom, right, you need to store this path. This path is there, right? You need to store in a vector of vectors. You need to store each and every path. Fine. You need to store that. So you say answer dot push back. Basically you append this path and then you return. So now what will happen? It will return to the previous function call. When it returns to the previous function called C, when we were at three, we did both the operations. We did right and down. We did both. But before returning over here, what we should do, we should be careful. We should remove six. And we should say six is false. So whenever we are backtracking, we remove the recent added element, recently added element, and we unmark it in the visited array. Now, same thing we'll do with three also. We'll remove three 
and we will unmark it. We'll say three is false. Now we are at two, wherever we were, na? two, two, we had done right only. We had not done down. So what will happen is from here, it will continue. So it will go as one, two, five. From two, we had gone right, but two, we are now going down five. It is a valid cell. So we'll say five is true. Then from five, we have two options, right or down. We'll go right six. Six is now unvisited. We have unmarked six. It is false now. Okay, so we'll push back six here. So six becomes true. And again, we have reached the last cell. So we'll just push it in our vector of vector vectors and we'll remove six and make it false again. Like this, you will have many other paths and this is basically how we approach the problem. So I'll just show you here. See in the main function, I am keeping rows and columns as input. Okay, user will input rows and columns and I've defined a matrix of size the row. Uh, rows, rows into columns. And I've also made a visited Boolean array. Initially, all cells are unvisited. I am taking input over here. Then I'm taking a vector called path, which will store each and every element in the path. I'm taking vector of vectors called all paths, which will store all the paths. I'm passing it to the function find paths. What are these parameters? Zero comma zero is where I'm starting. Zeroth row, zeroth column. Number of rows, number of columns. Input matrix, visited matrix. Sorry for that. Input matrix, visited matrix. The vector which will uh, have the path, which means all the elements in that current path and vector of vectors. Fine. Finally, I am printing all the paths. Each and every path I am printing. But what is this function? What is it doing here? See this function. Void find paths. So I have already explained what are the parameters arguments over here, you will already know now. See, if X is equal to rows minus one and Y is equal to columns minus one, we have reached the last cell. We have reached the last cell. When we have reached the last cell, we will, uh, this thing, store that value in our path as well as store the path in all paths. And we'll return. We won't do anything else. If this is not true, then we have to check if the cell is valid or not. So here we are checking for cell validity. If any of these conditions are true, we will just return. We won't do anything. But if the cell is valid, we will push it in our path vector. We will also mark it as visited. Then we will check for right side. We will go to the right side of the cell. Also, we will go to the down, uh, downside of our cell. After both of these uh, operations are done, we will finally unmark it in the visited array and we'll remove it from our current path. This is the backtracking part. So output will come like this. So I have put three cross three matrix, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is printing all the paths. paths. You can take right or down only. So that's all this video. It was simple DFS problem. I hope you're able to code it by yourself. Now, please share the video with your friends who are beginning to solve these kind of problems and tell them, Hey, can you solve this? Just challenge them. And then they will see the video and maybe get some help. And if you like my explanation, please hit the like button. It will help the YouTube algorithm and it will show my videos for more people. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon also. And, uh, 
share it with all your friends just put it in the whatsapp groups until the next video take care stay safe keep learning keep growing stay tuned bye